Hi, my name is Raven Newberry with the National Endowment for Financial Education, and today we are in Denver, Colorado, interviewing students, educators, and stakeholders on the impact of financial education. I'm Karen Hassett. I'm with Pennsylvania Assistive Technology Foundation, or PATF, and there I, I am actually the financial education director. Uh, we're a CDFI, that's a community development financial institution. We do loans to individuals with disabilities for assistive technology, which can range from hearing aids to walkers to a fence. It just, it's very interesting. There's no defined list. One of the things we realized is that individuals um, coming to us really were struggling financially. Their credit reports were um, just atrocious and that there was a real need not only to extend the loan, but to provide financial education. We just talked about why financial education is so important to me, but it is, it is something that really, um, it, it, I'm really passionate about. I have seen from personal experience, people whose lives have had major obstacles because of debt. Um, I, there, was, you know, there, there was a conversation in one of our panels today about somebody who realized after they had paid off their debt, they actually could sleep again at night. And um, so I, from personal experience, I've seen it. So do I think that high schools should be mandated to teach financial education? Yes. And I also think we need, in that mandate, we need to identify where we want it to be taught, how we want it to be taught, and what, what topics are important to teach. The successes that I have seen because of financial education, I can think of one really, or actually two, I'm gonna, um, two really times that, that really stick out. Um, first was we, we were, uh, I was working for an organization and we ran a boot camp. And that boot camp was, ultimate goal was, was home ownership. What, was that achievable in six months? Probably not for most people, but it at least got people on the path. And one of the things we did was education in addition to coaching and counseling. And we had one individual who, again, it was debt. She was, she was burdened under financial, you know, the debt of student loans, but also she had this car that wasn't working, was sitting in her driveway and she was still paying a loan on it. So we talking about it, talking through it with her, just advocating for yourself and, and find out, are there other options than having, you know, having to shell out additional money to repair the car? Maybe there was a re maybe there was a recall, or maybe you could just sell the car and yes, you'll take a ding on it, but at least you can pay off the loan and making her aware that that's important to make sure that you can at least pay off that loan so you're not paying a loan on a car you don't don't have. I mean, it's bad enough paying a loan on a car that you can't use. So she did that. And, and again, the re, you know, she started thinking, how can I advocate for myself? Yes, I do deserve this because people do come to the table with um, attitudes, money attitudes, that I don't deserve this. Um, I don't deserve to have resiliency or, or wealth. And, and so allowing you know, her experiencing that feeling of, wait, I can do this. I can advocate for myself. And um, was, it was just amazing. And then just very quickly, I was actually working one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And I think every, anytime you coach people, you're, it's financial education, right? I was a financial coach. And this woman, ironically, actually made more money than me. And, and, but she didn't, she had no savings. She wanted to buy a house. She couldn't, she, I was, she was living paycheck to paycheck. So we, over a course of, of several months, we talked about some of the strategies that she could use. What was she doing with her money and she, and, and how to build awareness. And we, and what we talked about was 
doing um, spending tracking. And she realized that she was spending um, money. Th she was actually buying l breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She was a busy, busy, you know, uh, mom. You know, she was a single parent, had a, had a pretty stressful job. So the easiest thing was do that, right? And and so we talked about some strategies, simple kitchen table strategies about how we can menu plan and grocery shop and include the daughter in her daughter in that planning. And through through those months, just talking about ways, very obvious, very fundamental ways to change our money mindset, she actually was able to achieve her goal in half the time that she planned, which was to pay off a debt and save $2,000. And she was gonna give herself six months to do that. She did it within three months. And, and then, but what was interesting, she said, well, now what? Oh, I've done this, so, well, okay. And now that, and then giving her the tools to re-motivate herself, to reset her goals. And I think that's all part of financial education, goal setting forward thinking, a uh, mindful spending. Like I love to spend money. I mean, if somebody told me you could never spend money, I would be, okay, yeah, I'm out. But being, giving individuals those tools to be able to have fun and, un, and fun that's not guilt-ridden fun, right? That we don't have that buyer's remorse. So, um, so those are just a couple of the examples, but just, you know, just, Really, it's it's just giving individuals the tools to think about, you know, where their money life is going. To learn more, visit nefi.org.